and Miss Molly is here and I am ready for some River Kids Church. Are you ready? I miss you guys so much, but I'm so thankful that we have the technology to be able to put our service online so we can still have our River Kids love and we can still learn and grow in Jesus, even though we're not physically together in our River Kids building. But like I said, I miss y'all so much. I miss your big smiling faces. I miss your big hugs. I miss your jokes. I miss your uh, inflatable races. I miss it all. And I know that all of our River Kids teachers feel the same way. I know Mr. Allen misses you and Miss Melissa, Miss Sarah, um, Miss Jody, Mr. Daniel, Miss Sandy, and Mr. Frank. We all miss you guys so, so, so much. But don't worry, we'll be back together soon. We just gotta make sure we stay healthy and safe and then we can be together and it'll be so much better than ever. We're gonna have so much more fun than ever before. Y'all just get ready. But for today and the next couple weeks, um, we are going to be here in your living room with you on your TV or your computer, your iPad. We're gonna be here with you doing River Kids at home. So let's do it. Now all month long, our theme has been forgiveness. We have been talking about forgiveness in different ways. Why it's so important to forgive each other, why it's important for those people to forgive us, because God forgives us no matter what, always. And forgiveness, the definition that we've been talking about of forgiveness is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. There's no revenge, there's no payback, because when you forgive them, it's wiped clean, just like it is with us and God. Wiped clean, you don't have to do anything um, to get payback, or they don't have to do something to make you feel better. Forgiveness is choosing to just wipe the slate clean, and I think that's so cool. So what I want you guys to do right now is pause this video and take 30 seconds to share with whoever's in the room with you, whether it's your brother, your sister, even your dog, or your cat, fish, whatever, mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, whoever's in the room with you, I want you to take a few seconds and share with them um, a way that you have forgiven someone recently. Whether it's someone in your family or someone at school, teacher, whoever it is, share with them how you've forgiven someone recently. That's so cool and here's the cool part, is that we get to choose to forgive. Forgiveness is a choice that we get to make. It doesn't just happen at the snap of our fingers. It's a choice that we have to make, right? It's a do-it-yourself kind of project, a DIY kind of project. No one has to tell you to forgive someone. Even if your mom says, you need to forgive your brother, you need to forgive your sister, you still have to make the choice to actually forgive them on the inside. And when we forgive someone in our life, we're able to fix our relationship with our brother, our sister, our mom, our dad, our friend, whoever it is, by forgiving them, it fixes our relationship. And it's not always easy. Sometimes forgiveness can be really, really hard, but it's something that God calls us to do. And we don't have to do it alone. We always have God to be able to give us the strength to forgive others. Okay, now we're gonna have a little bit of fun, all right, y'all ready? We're going to have a tic-tac-toe tournament, all right? Now grab who's ever in the room with you, mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever's there with you, not your dog or your cat or your fish this time because we need them to be able to write and participate in our tic-tac-toe tournament. Wow, that's a lot of teas. Um, but you guys have probably played tic-tac-toe before. If not, ask your partner, whoever you're playing with, how to play, and I'm sure they can explain. If not, ask mom or dad to look it up on the internet for you. It's very, very easy. If there are multiple people in the room, make this a family game, have some fun together. Um, this will take a little bit longer, but that's totally okay. This is gonna be fun, and you can make this a full-on tournament, okay? But here's the twist. Whoever loses, gets to go on to the next round. If you win, you're out. Okay, now if there's just two of you, then you'll just keep playing, but the loser gets to start every time, all right? And you can play best of five, best three of five. But if there's a, a multiple people and it's a tournament style, then um, whoever loses gets to go on to the next round. Whoever wins is eliminated, 
all right? So the person who loses the most rounds ultimately is the winner, okay? Okay, how silly was that? Right, we're so used to the winner winning a game and going on to the next round and the loser being eliminated. But in this game, the loser kept getting to go on and ultimately win even though they lost the whole time. That's not normally how tic-tac-toe or any games are really played, right? But the reason we played our game that way, kind of backwards, kind of confusing, where the loser wins instead of the winner, is because later today we'll learn from our Bible about a brother who lost out on something really awesome solely because he was unable to forgive. Crazy, I know. But before we do that, let's go over our three basic truths and then jump right into worship. Ready? Okay, our three basic truths. We say these every single Sunday. If you know them, I want you to shout them out with me. Number one is I need to make the wise choice. Number two is that I can trust God no matter what. And number three is that I need to treat others the way I would want to be treated. All right, wherever you are, stand up and let's get ready for some praise and worship.
know how to praise Jesus. Y'all are awesome at that for sure. Now let's jump into our Bible story for today. Hey party people! I'm Erica and actually I'm planning a party to celebrate fixing up my new apartment! All month long we've been talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. Forgiveness can clean up some pretty bad messes, which is exactly what I've been doing around this place. So before we get this party started, I'm going to show you one last do-it-yourself hack involving my new kitchen table. My friend Chris volunteered to help me move it into the apartment, which was great of him until the incident. It was Chris's idea to turn the table sideways to get it in the door. I told him it wouldn't work, but he did it anyways and broke one of the legs. So guess what? I was right and he was wrong. Now look at my table. More level. Thanks a lot, Chris. Guess who's not getting invited to the party now? It's you, Chris. <sighs> Let's do this thing. Huh, that was pretty easy, actually. Let's check this out. Test one. Uh... Test two. Last but not least, 
test three. <laughs> oh man. Don't think that lets you off the hook, Chris. You're still missing out on my party. Today's story is about a guy who wasn't so sure he wanted to party. My party's going to be great, by the way. We're going to have music and games and snacks. And although Chris would usually be the one to bring the snacks, plus he plays the best games and picks really good music. Ugh. If Chris isn't invited, maybe I'll be the one who misses out. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 21 through 32. When Jesus wanted to share something important, he often told a story to explain what he meant. Now one day the religious leaders were grumbling because Jesus chose to bring in outcasts and people who did things wrong. He hangs out with sinners and even like eats with them. Jesus knew their hearts. These men thought they were better than everyone else. So he told them the story of a man and his two sons. Now the youngest son asked for his share of his father's money and he took off. He spent his money on parties and all other stuff. But then the money ran out and he ended up at a miserable job feeding pigs while he himself starved. Desperate, the young son returned home planning on begging for mercy and working as a servant. Instead, his father welcomed him with open arms and even planned a party for his lost son in his honor. Ultimately, seemed like a happy ending. But Jesus wasn't finished with the story yet. The older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. If Jesus were to tell that story to us today, it might sound something like this. The older brother, let's call him Will. He spent the entire day working hard, perhaps plowing up the packed dirt on a brand new field. Come on, Bessie, just... <clears throat> One more row. <sighs> Gotta finish before the light goes. As the sun slipped behind the hill, Will finished breaking the dirt on his last long row. I just need some water and a quiet meal and bed. Will trudged slowly back to the house and left Bessie in the barn with a bag of oats. If my slacker brother hadn't run off, I wouldn't have to work so hard. As Will neared the house, he was surprised to see the lights blazing from every window. What is going on? Will stopped, trying to make sense of all the activity and the music. Then, the back door opened. One of the servants stepped outside to throw out a bowl of scrap. And she turned to go back inside. Wait. The servant paused. What's happening? It's just the party for your brother. The what for my what? You haven't heard? Your brother showed up this afternoon. Your dad had the fattest calf killed and roasted to celebrate. He is so thankful Jake's safe. A party? My dad is throwing a party? I'll let the family know you're back. What? No. No. I am not coming in. The servant wrinkled her nose. Whew. You want someone to run you a bath first? Leave me alone. The servant hurried back inside. Will paced as his exhaustion vanished and anger coursed through his veins. I work all day, every day. Has dad ever thrown a party for me? Will stalked back and forth, fuming as the back door opened up again. His father hurried out. Will, here you are. Well, look at that. You decided to remember I exist. Your brother is back. He's okay. Well, that is just fantastic. We're all celebrating, but it's not complete without you. Come on inside. Will turned and looked directly at his father, eyes blazing. All these years, I've worked nonstop for you. 
I've done every single thing you ask, and you never even given me a goat to have a party with my friends. You never said you wanted. This son of yours runs away with your money and wastes it like a fool. Then he shows up and you roast a fatted calf and throw a giant shindig. Will's father sighed, took a deep breath, and looked Will directly in the face. My son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours, but we had to celebrate and be glad. This brother of yours was dead for all we knew, and now he's alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. <sighs> Look, I'm real tired. I plowed the entire North Field. Well, thank you. I think I'll just go to bed. Won't you come into the party? Just for a few minutes? Will hesitated. He could see the people through the window, dancing, eating, full of joy. The light and the music called them. Please, Will. We don't know if the older brother ever listened to his father. We don't know if he ever forgave his younger brother. We don't know if he chose to go and enjoy the party. But what we do know is that if he stayed outside, he missed out on many good things. The older brother in Jesus' story totally missed out. Being right was way more important to him than repairing the relationships with his father and brother. The father, on the other hand, forgave his son and threw a big party! <laughs> Forgiveness is something we should celebrate. Think about it. In the beginning, God decorated for the biggest party ever when he made paradise for his people. But over time, people got further and further and further away from paradise. So. God sent Jesus. Because of what Jesus did for us, we can be forgiven. Jesus even said that when someone turns to God, there's great joy in heaven. <laughs> Maybe like a party. When you forgive someone in your heart, that's worth celebrating. I mean, forgiveness can save relationships. It can even make someone else feel like they matter. And forgiveness can take the weight off your shoulders too. <laughs> but when you hold grudges and you don't forgive, you can miss out on all that stuff. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. When you don't forgive, you miss out. So, of course, I'm going to forgive my friend Chris for breaking my table even though I was right and he was wrong. I don't wanna miss out on our party. And I definitely don't wanna miss out on our friendship. That's way more important to me than being right. Well, that's all for now. I've gotta go get ready for a party. See you around. See, how crazy was that? That guy missed out on something so awesome solely because he wasn't able to forgive. Now I want you guys to make sure that you are not holding back any forgiveness towards anyone so that you can have the fullness of life, the abundance that Jesus blesses us with, okay? And later this week, I want you to go back and read that story again in your Bible this time. And it's in Luke 15, 21 through 32. Maybe read this with your family. This will be an awesome time to recap what you've learned today. And the bottom line of today's story is that when you don't forgive, you miss out. And I don't want you guys to miss out on anything in life. So make sure that you are forgiving everyone in life. But don't worry, like I said, God can give you the strength and the words to do so. And last but not least, I want you guys to decide which of our three basic truths that we talked about earlier applies to today's lesson. The basic truth for today's lesson is that I should treat others the way that I want to be treated. So typically following our lesson on Sundays, we would dive into memory verse with Miss Molly. And as you can see, I'm Miss Molly and I'm here, but I'm throwing you for a spin. We are, we are mixing it up this week and we are doing a memory verse challenge. Um, parents, we have uploaded our memory verse on our River Kids Facebook page. Make sure you go check out the elementary memory verse video there. And then we want you guys to practice it and parents upload a video of your child doing the memory verse tag 
ROP River Kids and use the hashtag MemoryVerseChallenge and we will just flood our social media pages with scripture and the word of God, which is totally what the world needs right now. So I can't wait to see you guys on my Facebook page. Well, River Kids, like I said, I miss y'all so much, but don't worry, I will see you guys soon. Let's go ahead and get together, bow our heads and pray. If you are with your family members, just grab their hands, get close together, um, and let's pray and just thank Jesus for who he is. You ready? Lord, I thank you so much for who you are, God. You are the God who saves. God, you are the one who heals, Lord. You are our ultimate healer, our ultimate leader, God. And um, we just surrender ourselves to you, God, in a time of uncertainty. Things are changing. We have a new normal. We're doing school at home, church at home, God. I just pray that you would give us all peace. You would give us just a peace of mind knowing that you have this whole situation under control and you know exactly what's gonna happen. This was a surprise to us, but it was not a surprise to you, God. We just thank you for your word, God. We thank you for the truth that comes off the pages in our Bible, Lord. And we thank you for um, just what it teaches us, what our Bible teaches us, God. And I pray that we would just be filled with your Bible, be filled with your Holy Spirit, your love, your peace, God. Um, you have not given us a spirit of fear, God, but of love, peace, and a sound mind, God. Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you for what you are doing in our families and in our hearts right now. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. I love you guys so much. I'll see you very soon. Bye.